evening. It's good to see everyone. Thankful for your presence. You probably left your house to get here before it was raining. And now it's, it's pouring. And we need it. Thankful for it. It's good to see everyone out. It's good to see Bill and Susie here tonight. And we're thankful that they're doing well. We do want to continue to remember several on our prayer list. Darlene Maddox dealing with a broken leg and, and the death of her husband. You know, that's a lot to deal with and certainly we want to be mindful of her and minister to her every way that we can. Uh, Miss Iman mentioned a, a nephew that she has this morning uh, who has colon cancer. He lives in North Carolina. His name is Brian Thomaston. She asked that we pray for him. I would ask you to remember this week, Rachel, in your prayers. This is finals week, and uh, it's a big one. She's, she's, she is stressing a lot, and she's, she's got to do well on this test, on her final. Um, and she can. We know she can. Uh, she has her doubts, but uh, let her know that you're praying for her and thinking about her, and, and she can do this. Yes, please do. Yeah, after, after service, before we start our VBS stuff, well, I'll text her. It's good to see Amber here, both services today. Thankful for that. Continue to pray for her, many others. Uh, Sister Gail mentioned her son and daughter-in-law both dealing with health issues, Jeremy and Lisa, so let's remember them. Any others need to update or mention tonight? Andy. Um, James and Marcy's brother-in-law is having a heart cath on Tuesday. And they mentioned that this morning, so let's remember him also. Uh, tonight, if you'll stick around for a little while, we'll practice again some of our VBS songs. Enjoyed that last week, and I think we're getting better, and it's a lot of fun. And we'll also, I've got some flyers and some lesson plan outlines if you would like those, if you're going to be teaching um, we may talk about a few things, but um, but that's coming up on the twelfth. I think they mentioned is the um, is game night going to be that night or is it the nineteenth? The nineteenth. Let's do game night the nineteenth. Uh, it was in the bulletin that way. Yeah. Okay. So just to let everybody know, and then this coming Saturday is our men's breakfast. So we look forward to that and and always enjoy that. VBS work day after the breakfast. That's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that, but I'm sure that was part of the plans already. I just didn't think about it. Tonight, James will have our opening prayer. Uh, Michael will lead us in our closing prayer, and Patrick will be leading our singing. Let's begin, if you don't mind, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the rain that we're receiving. We pray that we'll ever be grateful for all the blessings you give us. And recognize, Father, that you bless us in ways we don't see and can't appreciate. We know, Father, you're a good God, you're a, you're a giving God, and you want what is best for us. We thank you for the church, for your word, and for every spiritual blessing that we have. We pray that you'll watch over us, and as we worship tonight, may everything we do say and think be in accordance with your will. We pray for those who are... On our prayer list, those who are dealing with physical and, uh, and issues in their body, we pray that you might strengthen them, give them the health that they desire. Be with those who are struggling emotionally and spiritually. We pray for support and for strength for them. And Father, we pray that you'll, you'll bless Rachel this week, that she might have success and, and a remembrance of the things that she knows. Thank you for all your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Sing the wondrous love. When we are 
Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. If I walk in the pathway of peace, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the breaking in his beauty. When Mark chapter 10, verse 21. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me.
Father, we are so thankful for everything that you bless us with. We're thankful for the beauty of the day, the, the rain we have received, and the changing of the seasons. Father, we're especially thankful for the good health that you bless us with each and every day. For those who aren't as healthy, we, we pray your blessings upon them, that the treatments that they receive will be beneficial to them, those who are attending to them, the physicians and family, we pray that their efforts will, will be beneficial to their health. We ask that you would forgive us when we have sinned against you. We pray that we'll strive to, to be better today than we have in the past. We pray for our family here at Central that we may continue to, to work together to do our best to be able to spread the good news throughout this community, to help support the work here, that we may be able to help build the kingdom and help bring souls to you. Father, we're mindful of those who are sick of our number here. We pray that, that the things that are being done for them will be beneficial to them. For those who are unable to be here, we pray that, that things will be done to help them so that they may be back with us again soon. And we're mindful of those who are mourning over the passing of their loved ones. We pray that we may give them words of encouragement, to give them a shoulder to lean on, and to be able to help them through this time of mourning. We're so thankful for the leadership here. We pray your blessings to be upon each and every one that is in that role, and we, we pray that you would grant to them the wisdom that they need for good health. We pray for their families as they support them in this work. We pray that we'll always strive to to be a congregation of, of your people, to be able to uh, help in every way that we can throughout our community. Father, we're thankful for your love for us. We're thankful for your son, that he was willing to give his life and that through his sacrifice, we have that hope of eternal life and the forgiveness of our sins. We pray that as we live here upon this earth, that one day we'll be able to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, when our life is over. And we ask these blessings in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing room. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels waken me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel it.
Anybody need to take the Lord's Supper this evening? Okay, room 110 after the last amen. Okay. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 100, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. If you're able, actually, please stand. Who that walking down the road carrying such a heavy load? Sinner lay her burden down as well as walking down heaven's road. Walking down heaven's road, gonna lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he walked along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing. Tonight, we're just going to have a sermon. <laughs> We've been involved in a study of a topic for a while, and I enjoyed that. Uh, I don't know how much you did, but uh, I appreciate your patience with me, and I hope it helped in some way. But I'm going to get back to doing some sermons, unless you have a suggestion for another study, unless you'd like to do something specific. I'm all for it. I enjoy that format um, a little better. I still think of myself as a teacher rather than a preacher, and I, I think I do better in that setting, in that situation. In fact, something to think about is I know some congregations have gone to something a little different on Sunday nights, and I've heard nothing but good from the congregations who are doing this. Instead of a, a class or a, a sermon, uh, some congregations have uh, come back and done a, a study, an application, really, of the morning's lesson. It's open for comments. You've had the afternoon to think about it, to ingest it, and to prepare yourself to discuss it. And from those folks who are involved in that, who have done that, I have heard great things. I think that's a, uh, something to consider if you'd like to do something like that might bring that up to the elders also but this evening we're going to think about the way the way of life that is Christianity have any of you seen the Mandalorian series a few of you probably have it's on Disney plus it's a Star Wars spinoff about this bounty hunter and his it's a faith it's a religion for them uh, they wear their armor at all times. They're really not supposed to take their masks off, but this guy does. He's broken some of his vows. But they have a saying, this is the way. In fact, we at Indian Creek a couple of years ago at the camp that we go to, we use that as the theme for the week. This is the way. This is the way of Christianity. It's the way of life. It's everything that we are. And... And there are some things about the way that maybe the world doesn't understand, but they need to see it in us. Um, I've had to put together a few pieces of my children's furniture or their toys or whatever it is they have that comes with those instructions. 
Uh, and of course, husbands, men are notorious for thinking that we can do it without those, uh, those blueprints, those instructions. And inevitably, then, we have pieces left over, don't we? And it won't work right, and it doesn't fit together, and we have to start all over, take it apart, and then use the instructions. There's a way. There's a way that works. There's a way that's right. There's a way that accomplishes what we set out to do, and then there's our own way. I have some friends back up in Walker County who are, who are building a house right now. And uh, it's not going the way they want it to. I don't know that it ever does when you're building a house. But as I was, they took us around just to see it in process while we were up there uh, a few weeks ago. And I've never seen so much wiring. They have all this complicated security system that's going in and it's within the walls. And, and it is incredible. But a house like their building is very big. Uh, they're, the blueprints are necessary. You cannot just build a house by starting and, and going about it piece by piece, side by side. You have to have a plan. You have to have a route. You have to have a, a strategy. There's a way to build a house that will, uh, that will result in a working, functional, livable house. And then there's a way to do it that results in failure. Christianity is a way of life and there is a way to live wearing the name of Christian that leads to salvation, that leads to heaven and eternity and there's a way to live that results in the other alternative. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 tells us really the right way. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Fearing God and keeping His commandments. That's the way. That's the right way. Proverbs 16 verse 25 tells us the wrong way. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So what way are we portraying Christ in our life? Is it the way that leads to the destination that we all have in mind? Or is it a way of our own making? There's some things we need to realize about the way and hopefully then that we can demonstrate these truths in the way that we live our lives. And first of all, what we need to understand is that Jesus is the way. There is no other way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. No other faith, no other religion, no other philosophy, no other way of life will lead to eternal life, will lead to the Father. Jesus is the only way. And when he says that, I think he does mean at one time he is the road, the path to God, to the Father. But he also means... I am the process. I am the method that you have to live by in order to see the Father. We talk about discipleship a lot. I try to stress and emphasize not just being a member, not just being a Christian, but being a disciple of Jesus Christ because that's what discipleship truly is. It's living like Jesus. A disciple is one who has heard a teacher and has adapted his teachings to his life. He's trying to be like his master, trying to emulate him, trying to follow his example. He's trying to live his life like the teacher, like the master, like the rabbi lived his. And that's what Jesus calls people to do, to become his disciples. The Great Commission is to go into all the world and make disciples we baptize people who are obedient, who, who have a faith that says, I can't wait another minute, I want to become a Christian. But baptism is the moment that a person's discipleship begins. They're making a commitment to a way of life. The way that is 
Jesus living in me and through me. People see Jesus in my actions. They hear him in my words. They see him in the way that I live my life. Jesus is the, the only way. It's not, going to, it's not going to be accomplished. The end result that we want can't be achieved by following Buddha or a Confucius or Muhammad. Jesus is the only way. When he says he's the way, it's a way that is good for all humanity. It's a way that is good and cannot be wrong. The way of life of discipleship to Jesus Christ, it doesn't do harm to people. I think of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And Paul says there, against such there is no law. It's not a way of life that is offensive to anyone. There may be governments that try to outlaw it. There may be philosophies that are contrary to it. There may be religions that try to put us to death. But Christianity is not a way of life that seeks to harm anyone. That's the way of Jesus. Jesus is this way. And he is the way, he says, to the Father. He's the only way to access God. Jehovah God, our creator. You know, when you're at the North Pole, Asher, Sarah, you ever thought about this? When you're at the North Pole, every direction is south. There's no way to go but south. That's kind of the way it is with God. God is at the top. He is the peak. He is the ultimate being. Everything else is below him. And the only way to him is by living like Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus. That's the first thing that we need to understand, that the world needs to see about us. The way of Christianity is living like Jesus. The second thing is that this way was foreordained. It's a way, a way of life that was decided by God before the world was created, before time began. This was the way that God knew would have to come about. It would have to be the way that people live to come to him, We go back to the garden after the, very, after the very first sin. We have the very first prophecy of Jesus Christ. After Adam and Eve partook of the tree of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, God gave them a clue. He gave them a reference to Jesus as the way of salvation, the way that would come and make things better for humanity. When he said that Satan would, cru would bruise his heel, but that the son of man, Eve's offspring, would crush his head. That's what Jesus did at the cross. He provided a way. He provided access to God. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, there is a way now that we live that God foresaw from the beginning of time. And that's how we know that this is the right way as opposed to a way that leads to destruction. Because this way has been in God's mind since the beginning. We have prophecies about it and there are several that we're going to notice in the book of Isaiah. If you want to hold your finger there. We'll go first here to Isaiah 35. But uh, we'll be coming back uh, in just a moment to further verses here. Isaiah 35, verse 8. And in highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. He's talking, of course, about the church. It's a change in way from the way that people accessed God under the law of Moses. 
They had to be born into that covenant relationship with him. That was how Jews had access to God. But there's going to be a new way, Isaiah says, a high way. It is elevated. It's better than every other way on earth. It's a way of holiness, purity. It's a way of life, living holy lives. And people don't accidentally find themselves on this path, on this road, living this way. It's not for fools. It's not for wayfarers or strangers. It is discovered intentionally. We read about it. We see it lived out around us. We want to know more about it. And we go to God's word and we find out what that way is. It is the way of discipleship. It is the way of Christ. It is the way that leads to the church. We can't have God without Jesus. We can't have the Father without the Son, we can't have salvation without going through the body of Christ. And so this way that Isaiah predicts here is ultimately the church. Ephesians chapter 1, all spiritual blessings are found in Christ Jesus and he foreordained before the foundation of the world that his chosen would receive those blessings. His chosen being the ones who lived according to the foreordained way. Not an individual and personal predestination, but God foreordained a way of life that if you live by, you will have access to those blessings and to that redemption through his blood in verse 7 there in Ephesians chapter 1 that he promises us. This way we know is the right way because it was foreordained. But we need to understand and be prepared to demonstrate that the way is difficult. It's not an easy way. We know that the majority of people living at any given time are on the wrong way. They're on the wrong path. They're headed in the wrong direction. It's only the minority that are living according to this way. It's not the number of people on the road that determine whether the way is easy or difficult. It's the opposition that you face. The majority on the broad and, and wide way, there aren't many things slowing them down. I've heard sermons before in my youth. I've never preached it. Maybe I should. Road signs on the highway to hell. There are signs warning people to turn around, to go a different direction, to take a different path. God has them in his word. They're in creation all around us. But there are so many people going that direction, it's hard for them to pay attention. It's hard for them to see those signs. Going against the flow as the Christian life demands a life of sacrifice, a life of service, a life of constant and regular worship and a desire to do those things as members of his body. It's difficult because the rest of the world's not living that way. Because we see so many examples around us of the pleasures of sin that it's tempting, it is Difficult to keep our eyes focused on the ultimate goal. But when we are true disciples of Jesus Christ, what we're showing in the way that we live is that we understand the path is going to be difficult. We accept that and we're dedicated to staying on this until the end. Matthew 7, 13 and 14, enter ye in at the straight. The difficult, not straight like this row right here between the pews. S-T-R-A-I-T, like a narrow, difficult passage between two land masses. Enter ye in at the straight, difficult gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We understand the way is going to be difficult. I've seen a meme, it's a stick figure meme, where 
down at the bottom on one side there's stick figures who who show what their expectations of the path to God, the path to heaven were, and it's just a, a straight line, and there's, there's the end of the journey. And then another frame shows the reality. That path didn't go straight, but there were ups and downs, curves, and valleys, and mountains. We understand it's never going to be the way we think it's going to be. There's promises to us in the New Testament that The way is difficult. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Yea, and all that will who have a desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When we are true, wholehearted disciples of Jesus Christ, that's what we expect. That's what we live with. Persecution for our faith. Whether that means failure to get promotions at work or... uh, or a ridicule at school, or even as some of our brothers and sisters across the world experience and live with threats against our life. We know that that's part of it, but it's worth it. Because we know this is the right way, the foreordained way, the only way that leads to life. The difficulty is worth it. 1 Peter four sixteen. If any man suffer as a Christian, it's, it's coming, it's happening. That whole book is about preparing us to deal with those things. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And when we live that way, glorifying God, rejoicing in our persecutions, taking it as though we expected it, and we, we realize it's part of the process then we're showing people that this is a way that's better than any other way. We're showing people that this is the only way that can arrive at that joy, that peace that passes understanding. This is the only way. It's difficult. It's not easy. And none of us are sinless. The road is fraught with trials and bumps and tribulations and temptations. And we're going to fall and we're going to stumble. But the expectations from God aren't that we live sinlessly, perfectly. It's difficult enough without having to be sinlessly perfect. God's expectations of us are just to stay on the path. To hold to the way. The way is difficult, but the way was foreordained. It was foretold that this would be the way of life that leads to Eternity in heaven in the presence of God. It only goes through Jesus by living like Him. And the way then is unending. It it begins the moment of our belief. The moment of our faith. The moment of our repentance. The moment of our obedience to baptism. That's when this way of life begins for us. The path, the journey, the method, the process. And it does not take a break at any moment, at any point in our lives. We don't go on vacations from the way. A funeral, a death, does not pause the way. Political upheaval in our country, even war, in our own borders, on our doorstep, does not give us an excuse for saying, well, I can live differently under these circumstances. The way is everything, no matter what happens. Revelation 2 verse 10 encourages us to be faithful unto death, that is, unto the point of death, even if it means our Death, And sometimes we use that, and I don't think it's wrong to use it this way. I don't think it's out of context, but usually we think of it as saying, up until we die of old age. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Even if that's not what Jesus meant in Revelation 2 verse 10, that's what he says basically in Matthew 10 verse 22. Ye shall be hated by all men for my sake, but he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. That's all there is to it. 
It's a difficult way, but we know it's the right one if we just stay on it all the way through. There's no stopping. There's no pausing. There's no taking a break. There's no taking a vacation. It's as the Allman Brothers sang in Midnight Rider, the road goes on forever. That's the way that we're on. It's a way that no matter what happens, no matter what comes against us, it's a highway. It's above everything else. They'll always be coming at us from below. It's a way that, that gives us a joy and a peace the rest of the world doesn't have. It's a way that expects difficulty and trial and doesn't get upset when those things happen. And it is the only way that leads to eternal life. It's the only way to have access to the Father. Are you on the way? Are you living according to the way? Are you fearing God and keeping the commandments? Or are you walking the way that seems right in your own mind? And tonight, most of us here, I affirm, <laughs> are living the right way. Do others around us on a daily basis recognize that in us? That's the question for us here tonight. It's one thing to say, I am a Christian, I wear his name, I bear his image, I claim to be a Christian. I go to church every time the doors are open. It's another thing to live like Jesus. So tonight, that's what I'm asking you here. Are you living the life of discipleship so that people see in you a different way? A way that draws them, a way that calls them, a way that gives them an alternative, offers them hope, something better than the way they're currently living. If you're here tonight and you haven't obeyed the gospel, now is your opportunity. Now is your chance. Start this journey. Get on the path. Choose this way. You know what you need to do. If you have done that, but you recognize my life doesn't proclaim what Christ's life proclaimed. Jesus didn't have to live his life drawing attention to himself. He wanted people to glorify the Father, to see the Father. He came to do the Father's will. But Jesus is the only way to have access to the Father. Does your life show the people around you that Jesus is the way? If you're a Christian and there's sin in your life, you know you're living according to your own will, according to your own way, repent of those things. We want to help you. We want to strengthen you. We want to encourage you. If you need to respond, won't you come forward while we stand and sing? We are promises God is the word, dear
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the time you have given us to worship you. Um, thank you for the, the day so that we may come together and worship you. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Please help all those on the prayer list and in the hospital. Jesus, we pray, amen.